You're listening to the Future Tech Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Future technologies such as artificial intelligence, stem cells, 3D printing, gene editing, Bitcoin, blockchain, the microbiome, quantum computing, virtual reality, and exploring space are much closer than you might think. In fact, many early versions of these technologies are in play right now, and the companies that are using these technologies are the focus of this podcast. My goal for you, the listener, is to learn from these podcasts. You may very well learn something that may change the course of your life for the better, steer you towards a new career, or give you insight into addressing a thorny medical problem. Remember, this podcast and its content is informational in nature only. No medical, tax, legal, financial, or psychological advice is being given. If you've enjoyed the podcast, please listen, subscribe, like, and tell your friends about it. Thank you. All right, you're about to hear my interview with Diana Jabour, electromagnetic radiation specialist, home biologist. Um, she's got a really interesting interview. Her mom, which is funny, she we talk about it during the interview, uh, seems to be one of the smartest people I've ever heard of. Unfortunately, um, I guess she's no longer with us, but Diana seems to give her tons of credit and, and wisdom. And again, she sounds like super wise, like Yoda. When you listen to this interview, I want you to pay attention to the potential hazards um, that may be in your house. But first of all, it goes back to how do you feel? Do you feel okay in your home or do you have brain fog? Do you not sleep well? Do you have insomnia? Do you get headaches? Um, Do you feel these strange physical symptoms when you're in your house? Because there could be all kinds of things going on that could be causing you problems. Tons of electrical devices, especially in the bedroom near where you sleep. And we discuss all these things in this podcast. I think you're going to get a lot out of it. And if you have problems um, that are similar to these or strange, uh, I guess, symptoms, and you think that they may be related to your home and the health condition of your home, whether it's mold or EMF or whatever it may be, uh, you're definitely going to want to listen in. Diana sounds like a really knowledgeable person. I'm actually going to be having her come out to my house, hopefully soon, to do this evaluation. So listen in. Hello, this is Richard Jacobs with the Future Tech and Finding Genius podcast. I have Diana Jabour. Uh, she's an electromagnetic and environmental specialist, and she evaluates, uh, she, well, essentially she's a certified building biology environmental consultant, an electromagnetic radiation specialist, and a new build consultant. So Diana, thanks for coming. How are you doing? Hi, Richard. Doing really well. Yeah, this, this seems like, I guess, well, to some people, an unusual area to work in. With some of your background, how did you get involved in building biology and things like this? Well, my passion has always been limiting toxins on in and around our families. Um, and I had an early start. I had a very forward-thinking mother who in the 60s um, and 70s really was into alternative uh, research. And she was in the forefront of the La Leche League, uh, homeopathy, um, and really also big into organic gardening. She was featured in the Dallas Morning News in 1971, talking about all of these things and that the use it once mentality and throw it away was not sustainable. So growing up, she always had this amazing ability to do some pretty good research. And at the end of the day, she would say, you know, Diana, science is for sale. And you have to look at both sides of the science and sometimes Really, the only alternative is to look at those alternative ways and then use common sense to move forward and make your decisions. And so time after time, she was proven right about so many things, whether it was nonstick pans or not using margarine or um, just a myriad of things growing up. And so I took that and started doing research on my own. It was fascinating um, what I learned, especially on the food front, health front, chemicals, um, you know, what were we putting on our bodies, in our bodies. And uh, so I just kind of took that ball and ran with it. And so any, um, any specific examples that you remember your mom telling you about something like a nonstick pan or yes. that you just remember because it was so prescient, it was so smart of her to say. Well, when I was in college, starting college and getting my first apartment, she we were out shopping to kind of furnish the apartment. And this was in 1989. And I said, oh, great. We make these easy omelets. And she said, no, Diana, you know, this nonstick, the PF, PFAs, they're already 
showing signs that it affects infertility, you know, affects your fertility, that the uh, chemicals are completely toxic, A, when you cook it because of the fumes, and B, if you scrape it off into the pan. And she said, yes, it's a little bit of an inconvenience, but use butter, you know, use a little more oil. And that was another thing at that time. It was the no fat, low fat carb craze that was going on. And mom said, it's going to make you sick. And sure enough, um, (laughs) I was training for a marathon. And the more that I did that no fat, low fat, the worse that I felt and the worse that my run times were. And so there again, you know, she said, look, if you have an issue, find the nearest health food store and start looking at the books and start asking questions. (laughs) And so that's exactly what I did. Um, but even just from the oils that you use, never did we have margarine. She said, look, olive oil and animal fats. And this again, now, you know, time has proven her correct, but back then it was pretty radical. Um, you know, with people saying, no, you have to use uh, margarine and vegetable oils and that's healthy. So she just said, look, never let convenience get in the way of common sense. You really have to look at this information and study both sides and then move forward in health because and quit asking the same question until you hear the answer you want to hear, right? <laughs> because it's the easy way. And uh, was, what's that? Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, uh, I've noticed, you know, if I ask questions, certain professionals will say, oh, you know, I've heard a lot of stories, oh, it's all in your mind, or well, there's no scientific uh, evidence for that. There's no clinical trial. There's no this, no that. So it's 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 difficult sometimes to ask questions because you get uh, different in front of or told you shouldn't you know don't worry about it or different answers or that kind of stuff. Well, and I I think if people looked at their health more like a business, if you had put every single dollar into a new business, and you are the CEO and your responsibility is to not bankrupt that business, you are going to open your mind and look at every avenue that could have an effect on your business. Well, I say we are CEOs of our health. And so you can't be afraid to look at every 360 picture because these things, there are so many things that can affect your health. And then you have to say, all right, put aside the convenience, put aside what I wish it was. What really do I feel like with common sense, seeing both of these sides might be the case? And also take the precautionary principle. When it comes to your health and your children's health, you really need to err on the side of health, as my mother used to say. And um, I really, that's just some guiding principles. And also she said, you know, if you feel resistance against some information, stop for a minute and say, is it because it's inconvenient and I don't want one more thing to have to think about it? Or do you really feel like that there might be something to the information that you're getting. And it could be food. It could be electromagnetic fields. It could be, are you talking on your cell phone and holding it next to your head and putting it on your body during the day? Cause that's so convenient. Um, you know, there's so many avenues that you can apply the science and common sense and building biology. That's why I love it because it's the science of healthy buildings, but it's also using common sense. Um, because you know, at the end of the day, big business, they don't have to prove things are safe. They just want to continue that discussion for as long as possible. Because if they can continue the discussion, then you're going to be buying their product. Yeah, well, you know, I'm in my 40s and I'm I'm old enough to know that, you know, years ago, you'd open the window, all windows opened. Mm -hmm. And then probably at least 20 years ago, in a lot of buildings, especially commercial buildings, now you can't. And you have to depend on their air system and you know, when you travel on planes or again, you're in buildings, it just feels like the air is like, Ugh. and you right. know, I always want to open a window. I always want to get out and have like, you know, at home, we, I try to open my window every single day. And I know there's people that don't open it for months or years. And it's just crazy right. to me that, uh, that buildings would be like this. People would be inside buildings and just never get fresh air. Well, and sick building syndrome is real. I mean, the EPA recognizes it and it's the off gassing from all of our toxic building materials. Some you can smell and some are odorless and yet you're still, um, you know, the the, the chemicals are still affecting your body like formaldehyde and SVOCs, which tend to off gas more over time versus the VOCs, which you can smell. It's kind of that new car smell, that new house smell. Well, those dissipate, 
but then the SVOC, uh, SVOC start releasing. So I found building biology and just fell in love with it because I had already had a very healthy research going on the water quality, the air quality, uh, lighting, and a little bit about um, some of these electromagnetic fields and not wanting to sleep with things plugged in next to your head. And the wonderful thing about building biology, the Building Biology Institute out of Santa Fe, they take a deep dive into all of these things. And so we have, there's four pillars that we study. And again, that's air quality, water quality, lighting quality, and electromagnetic fields. And under the electromagnetic fields, there are four different things that we, that we measure and try to mitigate magnetic fields, electric fields, wireless radiation, or RF, and dirty electricity. And so all of those, of those four, each has different sources, each have different, can affect people's health differently, and different strategies on how to lower our levels. But I always tell people, look, the good news, we can't do anything about the outside air but we have total control of what we're bringing in our space. This is the good news, but we just have to be aware. So I want to educate and empower my clients. A, what currently we walk through the space, we do the measurements. I let them know what these measurements mean. How can you avoid them in the future? Because I want people to be able to make good decisions moving forward. That's so important. And, um, you know, when, when I come in, I educate and help you know, the client understand the concerns on a deeper level. We do measurements and then we get a mitigation strategy. Do we need to shield? You know, is it just a matter of getting a, you know, battery operated clock right next to your head? That's an easy fix. And then we always like to verify after with, um, you know, our meters. So building biology is amazing. Like I said, it just, it puts the best of science and common sense together. So how do people typically find you? What are they telling you? And why do they want you to come? How would, how would the average person even know that this exists? Well, actually, I get a lot of practitioner referrals because it's interesting more and more, especially on the alternative side of the doctors, functional medicine doctors, they're realizing that, you know, that, that picture of health, that pie of health, there are many pieces. And depending on your epigenetics, you know, the, each piece of the pie could be a little bit bigger, a little more important. And Now with all the studies coming out, I think that magnetic fields, they really started, there was concerns and studies coming out in the 70s and 80s, especially with childhood leukemia, blood cancers, et cetera. Um, Then of course, there are electric fields. And it's only been recently that the wireless radiation boom, and it's everywhere because we're being blanketed, um, people started coming up with these very random symptoms. And it's very interesting because according to your own epigenetics, you can, you can manifest different symptoms, but what we do hear the most and is, oh my gosh, I can't sleep. I'm, I'm brain fog. I I'm having heart palpitations. Anxiety is another big one. Um, feelings that electric, almost like an electric eel is tapping on your legs. And so they're exhausted. They've gone to different doctors They're you know, they say it's all in your head. Um, and they're, you know, besides themselves, trying to figure out what is the issue. They're taking supplements, they're eating right, they're doing all of these things. And so for many people, this is the last piece that really needs to be addressed. And it's so interesting because EMFs, you can't see it and you can't smell it. You know, if it was a burning cigarette and you were coughing, you'd go, well, okay, let's maybe go put that cigarette out. Although <laughs> even with cigarettes, you know, what the, the industry the industry funded science. I mean, it didn't, it was 50 or 60 years before it finally became so evident as to be laughable. If you were to say there were no health effects. Um, So it's a little bit more challenging with EMFs, but that's where the meters come in handy because people can then see the numbers and understand, you know, when you're three feet away from a running motor versus right next to it, what that means for a magnetic field and how that might affect your health. So um, it's a, it's, you know, we do a very methodical uh, measurements throughout the home and especially where you sit, sleep and stand um, where you spend time. And then of course we also really focus on the bedrooms because your bedroom is where you rest, repair and regenerate. And you want those EMFs as low as possible, good, clean air, you know, 
We love uh, organic sheets and mattresses. So again, limiting that uh, off gassing. So our indoor air quality uh, is improved. So um, out of the factors that you look at in the home, what have you found predominates in terms of affecting people's health? Or is it just different literally for every home? Or, or have you found that EMF now plays a very big role? I, I, EMFs are such a big role. Um, generally, I love to recommend um, standalone air filters. Almost every home would need it. You know, it just because, again, uh, the paints, the pressed particle board cabinetry that off-gasses formaldehyde even 10 years later, the carpets, things like that. So I always like to recommend standalone air filters for everyone. I also really recommend, um, if you can, a whole house water filtration system. And if you can't, you can do an at point at the shower and also at the sink because water, your water quality, unfortunately, our water system or um, municipalities doesn't take out the herbicides and the pesticides and the pharmaceuticals. And they also use either chlorine or chloramine to disinfect. And this can be very, very problematic as you're inhaling, when you're taking a hot shower, you're inhaling the gases. All of these chemicals are being absorbed in your skin. And then of course you're drinking it. So it's the triple toxin threat. So I always say something that you're doing every day, let's try to do it as clean as possible. So we have an air filter in our bedroom. We are either have a shower filter with a water filter uh, or a whole house water filtration system, which is great. And then for our lighting, we want to stay away from the CFLs because they're very heavy on the blue light. It's a nervous system stressor. The reason it saves electricity is because it flickers off and on at such a fast rate. Now we real time may not be able to see that, but our body, our nervous system registers that flashing and it literally tenses up your whole body. So we say halogen, we say incandescent, it's more full spectrum because we're mimicking. Yeah. Tell me about CFLs. Um, What have you seen with people that, uh, do they, do their anxiety levels go down or go up, you know, go up with them or go down in the absence of them? Yes, they go down. And especially depending on how close, like if you are reading and have a lamp next to you with the CFL, well, your body can then become a great, <laughs> um, it will literally, it's, it's like having a little mini cell phone tower next to you. And again, you've got the flicker, you've got the heavy on the blue light, which can suppress your melatonin, prevent a good night's sleep. And like I said, all of these small things add up to a big picture of health. And I always say, whatever small ways that you can cut those toxins and those stressors on your body so that you're not causing inflammation um, or oxidative stress, the better. And again, lighting is big, the water and the air that I talked about. And then right now we're just seeing huge um leaps and bounds of people that are feeling so much better when they lower or completely eradicate their wireless radiation uh, in their homes. Now it's almost in an urban area, it's almost impossible to get down to um, some of the levels we'd like to see because you have interior sources and then sometimes you have these exterior sources if you're near a cell phone tower. But we go through and we look and see, well, do you have a router? Do you have a wireless security system? Do you have a home monitoring and sound system? Smart appliances, all of these, by the way, 24 seven, trying to communicate. So even when your TV, your smart TV is off, unless it's a Sony hardwired, you could still have a Samsung hardwired. It is still going to be sending signals through your space 24 seven. Your smart meter, your router, wireless printer, cordless phone, baby monitors, laptops. So all of this is massive pollution 24 seven. So um, we always say favor hardwired if you can. Um, and at a minimum, put your router on a $15 Christmas tree light timer. So at night, at least you don't have those levels pulsing through your space. Um, also, you, um, the question, if you look at, I don't know, a, a smart home that everything's wired up and people are using a lot of the latest gadgets and stuff mm-hmm. versus, um, I don't even know if you can compare it to a normal home nowadays, but you know, home from 20, 30 years ago, how much more EMF exposure is there now? Have you quantified that? Or even amongst the homes you see, like how well, much of a range of EMF have you seen? The, the professor, uh, Ali Johansson, he's from um, Sweden, and I've um, 
got to have some great conversations with him. And he was also in the documentary Generation Zapped. I recommend that for anybody who's interested in understanding what we are now being exposed to. He quantified it. And he's been studying this for 20 years. And he's so interesting because he said, you know, not many people were listening to me when I was talking about all the studies that are out there. He said, but the insurance industry did. And that's why they can't, it's EMFs are considered a pollutant and they cannot get insurance. And so I thought, oh, how interesting. But Ali Johansson, he quantified it. We are being exposed to one quintillion times more wireless radiation than 60 or 70 years ago. So that's one with 18 zeros, one quintillion. And given that our bodies are electric, I think it just, again, doesn't make sense that somehow it doesn't affect the human body. It absolutely does. There's enough studies out there, starting from the Naval Institute in the 60s and 70s, when they were studying because it was part of the military complex. And when those uh, studies were declassified, you can go and see the list of symptoms, which mirror what my clients are experiencing. So that was really some of the first studies that were done. And then, of course, you've got the... um, recently, um, the National Toxicology Program, the NTP study, their 10-year, $25 million study came out last November, or a year ago last November. And their whole goal was cell phones are safe, radiate that radiation is safe. And they found quite the opposite. They saw, they found a correlation between heart tumors or shawarmas and brain tumors, glioblastomas, uh, with exposure to wireless radiation. And you hardly heard a blip about that. And most people don't know that the World Health Organization has classified it a 2B carcinogen along with lead and DDT. But the American Association of Pediatrics has come out with a list of recommendations on how to lower exposures to children. Because remember, our exposures are cumulative. So this is a huge experiment we're doing on our children. And when you have the head of Harvard Pediatric Neurology, Dr. Herbert, she wrote a letter to the LA school district saying, look, we're not saying give, go away with technology, but wire, don't go wireless because children who are, it's a, it will affect their um, neurological development and children who are already having a problem, it will impact them even worse. The head of Yale Obstetrics started the Baby Safe Project with, I think there's over 200 scientists and doctors from around the world that have signed on, again, saying, lower your exposures for pregnant women and for children. So you've got big names, you've got big studies, um, but unfortunately, you know, the technology giant, the, the floodgates are open. And I also think it's difficult when you have the New York Times as a partnership with Verizon, you have Jeff Bezos who owns the Washington Post, you've got Bloomberg. I mean, all of these, um, it's more of marketing some of these articles that you read on um, Wi-Fi and that, oh, people who think or question its safety are, you know, tinfoil hat wearing people and just don't understand the science. And, you know, back from 1996, which was, by the way, when the standards were set and with no account for the biological impacts. And so um, Dr. Herbert's letter I love because she said, look, this is, this is outdated. We know scientifically that this 1996 standards from the IARC, it's outdated. And, um, but it's just like the tobacco industry. Um, I feel like there's going to have to be, um, there's, there, you know, people, so many people are going to become ill and then people are going to start asking some questions and that's already really started to happen. And so we kind of methodically go through and I make recommendations. I say, here are the sources. I also recommend some good consumer grade meters because I think people should be empowered. Once we've walked through and I spend a pretty intensive three or four hours in their home explaining things and um, I let them use a small consumer grade meter and I have the professional uh, equipment. And I always recommend people for a couple hundred dollars, they can have their own meter so they know what they're bringing into their home. And anything that says smart is stupid. Really, smart is stupid. Uh, because, I mean, thank goodness, at least they're putting it on the package, right? Because it's such a selling point right now. But yeah, anything, exactly. you know, anything with an FCC number, just, just as a little tip for your 
listeners, because people get confused, like, is this, is this wireless radiation? If it has an FCC number, uh, that's required for anything that's transmitting information through the air. So, um, you know, if you turn over a product, I mean, even Bluetooth toothbrushes, <laughs> that's 24-7 sending out signals that you can pick up, that I can pick up with my meters. And so, well, I didn't realize that. <laughs> yes. And then think about the toys and the gaming consoles that these children are playing. Um, everything wireless. And so, again, that awareness when you walk through your space and you realize how many different things that even 10 years ago we did not have. And I find it really interesting, too, that people also are not aware that when you go wired, financial institutes are required to go wired. It's more secure, it's faster, and it's stabler. It's more stable. So really, when people say, oh, gosh, I have to have my Wi-Fi. Well, again, if you, you know, have your workspace, is it so difficult just to have a, you know, your Ethernet, your shielded Ethernet cord? Um, because really, it's, um, again, safer, harder to hack, more uh, is it faster, which, of course, we all love that, and more stable. And so, you know, when we hardwired everything, it was funny because my husband was a little resistant, like, well, I, you know, my Wi-Fi. And it's so much better having it hardwired because we don't deal with what some of our neighbors deal with, which is interrupted service, especially when the weather is kind of iffy. So what did you what did you guys notice in your home when you changed things to hardwired? Like, did you take note of how you guys felt and stuff? Um, and everything? Well, that's how I found building biology because we built a home seven years ago. We moved in and I had already, this is before I found building biology, but I had already known enough through my alternative research that hardwire your security system, hardwire your internet, all the TVs were hard. Everything was hard, hardwired. So when we moved in, everybody started having kind of different symptoms. I got insomnia, um, kind of this like, like feelings of, um, I would say almost anxiety, but it was like a heart, like almost like a heart um, squeezing. My daughter static started having night terrors. She was flipping over and from, from her headboard to the opposite side of her bed. And then my son was having issues. And so I thought there has got to be a, what is going on? And again, I kind of went back to my mom, research, 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 whatever problem you've had, Someone else has had that same problem, reached, researched it, found a solution and written about it. And she was right. And she said, you know, it might not just be one thing. It might be several, but always, always research. So I stumbled across building biology and I was reading these symptoms of some of the you know, different fields and what side effects you can have. And I thought, and I told my husband, I said, look, class starts in a week. I've got to fly and figure out what is going on myself. I'm going to fly. I'm going to attend this class. It's going to be a week. My husband thought I was crazy. And I went to the class and it just, everything opened up to me. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is what our problem is. So I had the president after the class, after the class was over, I had the president of building biology fly in. And I said, I want to learn exactly what you do, how you do it. And, you know, let's, let's measure well, it turned out that even though we had hardwired for an alarm system, our alarm company put wireless everything in from cameras to smoke detectors. All of our smart TVs, even though they were hardwired, were emitting 24 um, seven. We, my daughter on the other side of her headboard wall was the entertainment center. So she had huge magnetic fields and electric fields that she had been sleeping in. And so instinctively her body was flipping over because it was such an uncomfortable and high field. Um, my son had wires running all the way up his headboard wall um, from the office downstairs. And so he had huge electric and magnetic fields. So we, um, you know, had our plan and boy, we jumped on top of it. And um, we just like systematically, we, you know, had our plan and we had to, you know, fire our alarm company and we they had to cut back into the wall to get the wires because they just covered it up and we had an IT guy come and um, take out the wire, wireless component in the back of the TV although you can also buy a $15 outlet kill switch where you plug it in and with a little remote it's just like you unplug the TV because unfortunately with smart TVs unless you unplug it it is emitting 24/7 um and so we went through all of these um things we also 
you have to be very aware of what is plugged in next to your head and also what's on the other side. But building biologists believe in sleeping in electric fields that are close to nature. And the only way to get that is to find out the circuit breakers that affect each of your bedrooms. And we, you can have an electrician install a command cutoff switch and you have a little remote. And when you go to bed, you hit that remote and it turns off the breakers that affect your room. And so you're sleeping in a nature-based field. And I have to tell you, we sleep so well at night and my husband travels and he was the one that was like, well, I gotta have another remote. <laughs> and you know, he was my hardest customer, I always say, and but he's my biggest supporter because he said the sleep is phenomenal. And, and it is for everyone. I mean, everybody improved, but it was very interesting because everybody had different symptoms. Well, how much of a, how much of a difference, you know, like how many people have you spoken to with, that have done the hard wiring and then how much of a difference did they notice on average? Almost everybody. And sometimes I have very electrically hypersensitive, um, clients. And so they have already hardwired, but they're looking for other smaller sources, which I can go in and, and sometimes it's a wiring error or an outlet is just, you know, exuding six feet out with high dirty electricity. So those things make a difference. I mean, they can literally feel it. They're kind of the canary in the coal mine. Um, and depending on what kind of shielding we have to do, there's a lot of things that you can do in your space. But then once you eliminate your interior sources, then you kind of look around and say, okay, what's going on in the exterior? What is, you know, are, can we do a window film to block a cell phone tower? Or maybe a neighbor who's got a really strong um, signal coming from their router or a smart meter. Like in Austin, we can opt out of our smart meter. Uh, but those signals are incredibly strong. They're doing micro bursts 24 seven. And so if you have a neighbor who has a smart meter and you happen to be near that, that could be affecting you. So the smart meter is the electric meter that brings in all the electricity to a house. That's right. And it used to be analog where someone would come by monthly and read the numbers. And now your information is being transmitted 24 seven back to the electric company. And it's really interesting because in certain cities, you can opt out and pay a little extra money to go back to an analog and have the meter reader come and it's maybe 25 extra dollars a month. Um, but smart meters, they're, I mean, if you're sleeping and your headboard wall is on the other, and the other side is a smart meter, people have become very ill from that. And so you either have to shield it, move or if you can, the best is to opt out because basically every piece of electronic equipment has kind of its own little code. So, you know, the electric company knows when you're opening a refrigerator, washing your clothes, they sell that information. Apparently they make more money off of selling your information and what kind of a consumer you are than the actual electric, electric selling. Really? They, yes. Wait a minute. So they'll know depending on the device you're turning on or off what you're using in the home and when. Yes. And some people wow. think that that's eventually going to be used to do a leveled, um, oh, well, if you use your electricity from 10 to 2, you're going to have a higher rate. I don't know if that's uh, if that's coming in the future, but it kind of makes sense. Already, we do have off-peak and on-peak. So, I mean, right. that's already been here for a while, right? Right. So, so it's um, how far distance-wise from a smart meter do you see that people can be affected? You know, it really depends on the sensitivities, but if it's on the other side of your headboard wall or near a bedroom, you have got to shield. And there's some easy things that you can do from paint to getting this kind of thick foil, I mean, and just putting it on the wall so that it reflects back. You can do, um, there's a bag that you can put on the outside. I mean, there's different things that you can do depending on the location and the strength. But I say the first, if you can opt out just opt out and you should call your electric company and see if it's an option. And sometimes they're not even aware the person, the first person that you get on the phone, I've had this happen a lot that they go, Oh no, you can't opt out. And then I would say, get that in writing, ask for a manager and get it in writing because then they will are more likely to double check that that's actually the case. You really kind of have to push. Um, and I had that happen here a couple of times in Austin where they called and 
that, you know, the first couple of people just weren't uh, that worked for the electric electric company that weren't aware that you could opt out. They never heard of that. So just remember that, um, be persistent, uh, talk to a manager and ask for it in writing. <laughs> if, if they say, cause every, every city is different and every state is different. Um, and what, so, what, um, what have you seen about 5g? It looks like it's going to be rolled out or is rolling out any, uh, experience with it or thoughts about it. Well, it's very scary. And 5G, of course, means fifth generation, not five gigahertz, which it's really kind of confusing because right now we have five gigahertz routers, right? Which is very strong. Um, But fifth generation could be anything from eight to 98 gigahertz. We just don't know what they're planning on putting out there, but they're kind of broadly labeling it 5G. There's some lawsuits going on right now um, about the 5G and, you know, fiber optics is, you know, it's, it's amazing. Fiber optics, again, is more secure, more stable, and yet they want to do 5G. And then they want, you know, who's making these 5G antennas, the Chinese, I don't know. Um, that, that to me, uh, you have a lot of our elected officials really worried about where these, uh, 5G basically, which you can hack into, just like your TVs, by the way. Um, it's a little scary when some of the fine print warning says, um, be careful about talking about personal things in front of your TV. Uh, and I was just listening to an interesting um, interview about uh, the concerns uh, about the Chinese um, because of the spying issues making all of our um, antennas. And I think, um, I, think that's a, I think that's a valid concern. So we, it's, it's a, it's a challenge though with 5G because until it starts getting rolled out, then we have to start measuring. And when you get up into such high gigahertz, that equipment to measure that uh, are hundreds of thousands of dollars. So we're, you know, Austin is a city that's, you know, slated to be uh, 5G and apparently they're doing some things downtown. So, but there's a lot of, a lot of really motivated people who are trying to stop it. I love um, the Children's Health Defense, Bobby Kennedy Jr.'s organization. He's doing some amazing interviews and works. He's just put on Daphne. I'm going to mess her name up, but Tokov, I believe. She's phenomenal. She's an attorney. She got very ill from wireless radiation. She didn't believe it was true. She then started doing the research. If you've ever seen her speak, she's phenomenal. She also was the one who uh, argued in front of the Israeli uh, Supreme Court. And Israel is one of the countries that only allows certain amount of hours of Wi-Fi in the classrooms, dependent on age, your age. It's like France. France, the only way you can have Wi-Fi on in the classroom is for an educational purpose, and then it must go off. And they also have to label where that Wi-Fi hotspot is. Um, And and Belgium, I believe it's Belgium and um, Cyprus too. I mean, they really are going to some really good lengths to protect our children. So if you also want to get some interesting articles, uh, also Bobby Kennedy Jr., he was in the 5G Summit. That's another really good resource for your listeners. Um, They have probably 20, 25 speakers, and he talks about the 5G and also really goes into detail about how, you know, the uh, industry, the wireless radiation industry isn't able to get insurance and why and kind of some of the history behind that. So you've got some really, you know, big studies and, uh, you know, very intelligent people who have have looked at all sides of this and say, this is a, this is going to be a disaster for the health of our children and for us. And it's interesting because, you know, again, depending on your epigenetics, different people can manifest different symptoms. And just like with smoking, not everybody's going to get cancer. Not everybody who smoked got cancer, probably 40 to 50% did, but everyone had the health effects. Some just had a stroke, some had heart problems, uh, some had lung issue, you know, so right. it's kind of the same thing with the wireless radiation, which makes it a little confusing for doctors to be able to say, Oh, this symptom is, this must be the problem because you're having this one symptom. Well, lots of different symptoms, but like I said, the insomnia is probably the one that reverberates. Um, and now kids are getting insomnia and anxiety. 
tell me about the in-home assessment. You said it's three or four hours long and you come and you evaluate four main parameters. Like what, what's involved in that? So I have different um, equipment. And the first thing I like to do is walk through and measure magnetic fields. And we do that with the lights off first and we go through and measure the different spaces and then we turn the lights on and then measure. And the reason we like to do that is because we can find if there's been, if there are wiring errors, because if the number is elevated when the lights are on versus the lights are off, that would point to a wiring error. Um, we also, if you have high magnetic fields throughout the home, then we need to look to see have they, you know, are, do you have metal water pipes? Is there grounding on the metal wa- water pipes that's running throughout the home? Is there a buried power line? Is there a above ground par- power line that is exuding into your space? Um, or you can have an at point magnetic field. And this is a motor that's turning like a refrigerator or a running dishwasher or an ice maker, right? So where are you sitting, sleeping, and standing? I've had some clients who had issues and would get really fatigued in the afternoon. Well, and where they were prepping food three times a day, they were standing next to an ice maker, which has huge magnetic fields. Now, three feet away, it drops off significantly. So again, it's, I like to go through and point out and show, you see, watch where you're sitting or standing, or if they sit in a chair and they have um, something that's running on the other side of the wall, you're going to be inundated with those high magnetic fields. So we do the magnetic fields first and I make some notations in every room and write that down. And then I like to um, go through and do the wireless radiation, uh, the possible sources. I measure each room and I also like to measure the outside so I can kind of get a feel for what is their urban area like versus what's going on inside. And, you know, your meters right away will show you the different different um, sources have different sounds. There's kind of a slapping noise for a router. And I make notes of all of their interior wireless radiation sources. And then we go through and measure dirty electricity, which, you know, basically everybody has dirty electricity because of our power, you know, our modern day electronics requires less or more of the 120. And you- what, what is dirty electricity? What does that mean? Well, dirty electricity is the excess electricity that's running on your wires. And you can get some from your neighbors because it's, we have, a, unfortunately, we have a very inefficient system. You know, what, what comes in on the wires does not go out of the wires. And so you have grounding, you've got, you can have some of your neighbors or a business nearby, dirty electricity coming in. And then also our appliances and all the things that we have plugged in can use more or less the 120. And so that dirty electricity exudes into your space and you, you have a little meter that you plug into the wall and you kind of figure out how high your dirty electricity is. And there's things that you can do. You can have a whole house dirty electricity filter. You can do plug-in filters um, to lower those uh, exposures. And then we do the electric fields where you're, where you sleep. And that's where we really try to, um, get down to as close as nature also. And by finding out which circuit breakers affect your bedroom, and you can use a body voltage meter, which I think my clients really enjoy because that body voltage, you can see real time with the breakers on and off, how much electricity your body is capturing from, because all of the wiring in the walls exude six to eight feet in your sleeping area and can disrupt your sleep. And so, or any cord that's plugged in next to your bed even if that lamp is not on or that light is not on it's still exuding six to eight feet and so that's where once you turn off those breakers your field can go almost to zero and we're talking about you know volts per, volts per meter we can go from 20 to 30 down to 0.02 um, you have to turn things off at the breaker or can you turn like if you have a power strip with five things plugged in can you just uh Unplug the power strip. That could be a good first step. But remember, all the wiring in your walls, your floor, and your ceiling, still six to eight feet. So we recommend a command cutoff switch that your electrician can install. And each button can control up to four breakers. So, and that's usually about how many breakers. Sometimes it's a little more complicated, but it's usually about four breakers because it's not just your bedroom. 
it's usually like a hallway or maybe a room underneath if you're on a second level. So we can very easily by um, turning all the breakers off and then switching each one on and off. Of course, we don't touch the AC. We don't touch the refrigerator, you know, the things that need to run. And yeah. then it's just this easy little remote. And once you're ready for bed, you turn off your light and you click the remote. We always like to have a night light so that you know for sure you turned it off <laughs> because sometimes people are confused. Like, did I, did I hit that remote right? But if you have a night light, once you've turned off your light, you'll see that that will turn off when you, you know, hit your breaker. And people, that it's so interesting because it's that sound sleep at night with the electric fields. We, we kind of say that, um, you know, RF is like a mitochondria killer, um, magnetic fields, you know, your immune system, it can be very depressing on that. And some of the studies with the blood cancers, that's a huge concern. And then the electric fields, it's that disrupted sleep. And so, you know, each kind of has, again, its own sources, but also, uh, it, it, you know, the own strategies, whether you're renting or owning, right? I mean, you can, there's always something that you can do. Always. There's right. shielding fabric, there's paint, there's the, the, you know, thicker foil that you can cut into big sheets and put behind your headboard wall. Um, lots and lots of solutions. And I don't ever want to bring up a problem without bringing up a good solution that's tailored to their situation right then and right, you know, at that point. And sometimes, you know, you've got one person that's really motivated to get this done and the other one's kind of dragging their feet going, I'm being drug along here. And that's right. another thing I really try to um, bring in some scientific studies, you know, whether it's for the men um, and kind of, and, and just that common sense of, look, you're a businessman. Again, if you were put all of your money into a business, you would be looking at every source on how to get the best advantage and how to make sure you don't go bankrupt. And that's why right. I want people not to go bankrupt their health, to really open their eyes and look at some of these new ideas, quote unquote. It's really, really not new ideas, but they're new to someone at some point. Well, um, what about grounding? You know, I've spoken to a few people that uh, seem to think you can get grounding sheets or these grounding mats or that kind of stuff. Have you seen any evidence that that helps? You know, some people like it. There is a question mark on what electric, what amounts of electricity are running through each person's ground going back to the electric company. So I really recommend now I, I like if you're working at a computer that you can kind of put your feet on a, on a grounding mat that you can plug in. But I have not recommended um, grounding pads to sleep in. And there are some building biologists that do, but, uh, and really swear by it. Um, but I think it's just too much of a concern for me because, you know, sometimes there's a question on where you're plugging it in, what that plug, then maybe you have to do it outside. And again, what kind of free electricity is running in the ground. So I say, let's just try to um, watch what's plugged in next to your head at a minimum. Make sure your cords on your lamps are shielded because that also exudes a pretty big field. And um, also do a remote command cutoff switch, or you can use the paint. They have a really great uh, carbon paint that you can um, paint your walls and ground and you have an electrician ground and that can block your fields. Now, if you were building a home, I would suggest you do MC cable, metal clad um, cable, because the wires run through metal and that blocks it automatically. Um, that's only required for commercial buildings. And it, a few, a few States differ on that. And I think it's Chicago is one where it's required for residential Beverly Hills. It used to be, um, but now everything is pretty in residential is that Romex, which um, exudes again, six to eight feet. So I think um, I always say too, look, no matter what kind of food someone says is a health food or grounding, try it, see how you feel. Don't just say, oh, I must feel better because I read these articles. Uh, if you're going to try something, really hone in on how your body feels and how you're feeling after, because I just think at the end of the day, that is going to be your best guide, right? How do you feel? And that's another thing we always say, look, we found the circuit breakers that affect your sleeping area. Turn it off for a week, 
you know, at, at night, you know, each night and see how you feel. Do you feel a difference? Um, and Makes that's, sense. yeah, I, I just really want people to kind of take their power back and realize there is a lot of information out there. And if more people could just a get a hold of their common sense, put convenience to the side sometimes, and then really, really pay attention to how they feel. Um, that's probably what, some of the best advice I could give. Yeah. Well, we're getting close to out of time. Um, do you have uh, any significant percentage of people that don't feel anything or is it pretty rare that uh, they won't have a positive effect yeah. that they can notice? There's a percentage where the partner just says, I don't feel anything. And it was interesting because I went to an EMF conference in San Jose. They had 300 um, doctors and scientists and it was a continuing education course for them or credit for them. And it was fascinating to listen to the different doctors, you know, from all over the world speaking about um, EHS and, um, you know, EMFs and, and how important it was for health. And they did talk about there is some of a, some type, although everybody, you, your body will have an effect. Testosterone seems to be not, not necessarily a protective factor, but the different symptoms are protective right? Where the women, it's more women that I see are sensitive to this than men. And so, and they're, you know, diving in deeper on some of the studies on that. It's not that men aren't still getting some of the negative effects that, you know, are reported in the um, bioinitiative report. I mean, you've got thousands of studies, um, but they just don't uh, feel that sleeplessness or um, the like anxiety kind of br- brain fog, especially with women, the brain fog. And so, um, yes, you, 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 sometimes you can, uh, you know, the other person just says, well, I'm sleeping the same. <laughs> and the other person is like, oh, I'm finally sleeping. So you always kind of see well, a little bit of everything. Yeah. Well, good. well, what's the best way for people to get in touch and to, uh, you know, talk to you about doing a in-home assessment? Sure. Uh, JaborEnvironmental.com. They can kind of read up. Um, I know there's a lot of information that kind of we've covered. And on my site, I have kind of an explanation again of the different EMFs and what we, why we try to avoid them and some tips. I have a really good post on uh, sneaky sources of magnetic fields with a good graphic that shows, you know, kind of beware of what's on the other side of the wall, et cetera. So, and then they can contact me directly via the website. And, you know, happy to kind of talk to people and figure out um, if I might be of some assistance. Well, excellent. Well, Diana, thank you for coming on the podcast. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me, Richard. I, I really appreciate it. You're listening to the Future Tech Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Future technologies such as artificial intelligence, stem cells, 3D printing, gene editing, Bitcoin, blockchain, the microbiome, quantum computing, virtual reality, and exploring space are much closer than you might think. In fact, many early versions of these technologies are in play right now, and the companies that are using these technologies are the focus of this podcast. My goal for you, the listener, is to learn from these podcasts. You may very well learn something that may change the course of your life for the better, steer you towards a new career, or give you insight into addressing a thorny medical problem. Remember, this podcast and its content is informational in nature only. No medical, tax, legal, financial, or psychological advice is being given. If you enjoyed the podcast, please listen, subscribe, like, and tell your friends about it. Thank you.